Hi, I'm a master's student majoring in computer science and this is ATPG or uh, automatic test pattern generation. This is more of an electronics topic, uh, but we will be doing an overview of what it is and what are the challenges um, we face when we do an ATPG in comparison to a TPG, which is just the process is not automated. So let's get started. So we're going to talk about the digital functioning design. So we have a test pattern and we have a golden response. So test pattern is anything you say you're working on a 16 bit circuit. That means it's going to check for 16 bits and golden responses for this bit. This is the correct answer. So if you're taking an AND gate, a two bit AND gate, you want uh, it to be 0, 0, 0, 1, 4 everything apart from one one you want the golden response to be zero and then for one one you want it to be one so same thing but with like uh like a more complicated circuitry so not just an and gate maybe it's in parallel and gates with another uh or gates xor gates just like put into the mix and instead of having like a simple two bit it's like a 16 bit or a 32 bit circuit so you get this test pattern you test it uh, so you put it through your circuit, it produces some output, you compare this output with the, so you have your output, you compare it with the golden response through a comparator, and if it is the same, uh, it returns a status saying that, yep, circuit is working fine, and if it is not the same, it should tell you that there's something wrong with the circuitry, right? So here you have your test pattern generation, like I said, this is your test pattern, this is your golden response, so for say this test pattern, say 11001, your response or the correct response should be 101 and so on. So yeah, you have to figure out for this input, this is the correct output. This is where things get interesting. So let's consider this example. We have our bitwise R. So we have from I0 to I24 and you have your output should be I1, sorry, it should be I0 or then or I1 or I2 I, till up until you have your all I24. So yeah, you're checking for 25, I believe, bits in this example. And if you test it, you can see that this is your golden ratio. This is your output. You have your one bit output and your test pattern generation. So you need to test for around uh, that's uh, 100,000, so around 33 million you need to test for each output. So you need to have a test pattern for around 33 million uh, bits. So that, or you can just figure it out by two to the power 25, that, that's the number that it, that it comes with. But if you have two raised to the power 25 cases, test cases to think about, and these are like the normal, uh, so you're using a megahertz tester, so it can um, sense maybe one pattern per second, uh, sorry, one million pattern per second, and there are 33 seconds per chip. And, you know, so, and we're testing the chip, so we need maybe one million or maybe more chips. So that's like around uh, 5,500,000 5, hours with like 33 million seconds, which is like, over 22,000 days, which comes up to 62 years. And this was like, I, I believe it was like around like maybe 10 bits or something. Uh, but then what about 64 bit or like 124 bit? If a 10 bit one is taking 62 years to test, then what about a so we usually use like a 32 bit or a 64 bit. Let's let's dismiss the 124 bit. What about these two bits? It would be in <laughs> decades and like years and years. So before we find the solution to the uh, question, let's look at structural testing because this is the solution to the question. So what it says is instead of testing for chips, you test gates. So here we have five, six um, OR gates, I believe. And this is, again, the test pattern. This is the golden ratio of what the output is supposed to be. And now if we take 
structural testing into account from two days to the power 25, which was like around 33 million, we've gone to 192. Again, using the same tester. So for 1 million samples, we're taking 16 seconds. So gates are tested and integration is not. So with the addition of extra pins, we're able to solve this whole problem way easier instead of years we're like down to like a couple of seconds and that's that's pretty good i'm not sure if it's a couple of seconds but it's definitely not years so there are different types of structural testing that can be done so this is structural testing with fault model so you have your five input and gate um and at i3 if you notice it is open as in i3 should be connected but it's not now let's think about what can happen if this is the case so if you think about the golden ratio we we know that for any other case but one 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 it should be zero but now if we have i3 this is open so it's just going to say zero for everything so we will never get that one so net i3 is the defect so exactly the error is when i1 is one i2 is one and so on our output is zero when the output should be one so it's physical like one or multiple nets are open or short so open means they should be connected and they are not connected and short means two of them are connected so like i3 and i4 are connected together which means um, i3 is dependent on i4 and i4 is dependent on i3 so there will be no instance of time where i3 and i4 are different so if one is zero both are zero if one is one both are one so logical manifestation like the expected output is one but we're getting zero so yeah that was what it is dealing with a fault model so there are different types of fault model like stuck at fault which is stuck at a single fault so single stuck at fault multiple faults so zero and one uh, delay fault model so when we take into account a practical example, uh, we have to consider how much time it takes to go from zero to one and vice versa. Uh, with an ideal model, we just assume that it's, uh, it doesn't take any time to change states. And bridging fault where we have the and short and or short. So let's talk about stuck at fault and fan outs. So they can be one or they can be many. In, well, there are three and minus one possible combinations. So let's see. So let's take we have fault. Um, so yeah, with this, we're testing for faults, right? So we have uh, I1. And so it says that if everything is one and if we get a zero here, it is at fault. If we get a one here, it's not at fault. Similarly, because these are all AND gates and we're all we're testing it for one. Uh, we just need to check if we're getting one at the output and if any instance we're not getting a one we can just backtrace and we can figure out which gate is giving us a problem and if it's the gate or the source or what's 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 going on and similarly if we change that one into zero we know that uh, so we have only one output which is zero uh, one input which is zero now others all are one and since it's an AND gate we know that if we get a one here it means that it's at fault any so we're just expecting the output to be zero no matter what so pros and cons we have no extra pins and lowest test time and the thing is functionality is not tested we're just testing the gates not how it is functioning so introduction to atpg so this was all about test pattern generation we were talking before we were talking about a non-automated process and now we're going into an automated process so yeah, this is how a basic circuitry a circuit diagram looks like for atpg we have your defect free and you have your defective and we have your output so generate a vector that can produce a logic one and this is how we test if uh, with automatic test pattern generation so there are three phases into this algorithm one is false sensitization fault propagation and justification then you have your rods five value algebra i'll make a separate video about this as well so your rods five value algebra is for like a particular input you will always have a particular output like 
no matter what your other input is, this will always be the output for it. Uh, and these are the gates, like we talked about the AND gate, if we're testing an AND gate and we're saying one, so for any case, it should be one. And if it's not, that means it's at fault. Then you have your path sensitization. Now, depending upon which path it's taking, we can decide if uh, it's working fine or not. This is done with an AND and an AND gate. So we can ensure that whatever input we have, we're taking the inverse of it as well. 